With a myriad of tabletop, board, and card games released each month, there's a lot of titles to sift through. Among the new releases, revitalized old favorites, announcements, and Kickstarter campaigns, several games inevitably capture our attention. These are the top 10 games that recently stood out from the crowd to us and are now on our radar. Hi, I'm Paula Deming, and I make the board game sketch comedy series, Things Get Dicey. Chaz has invited me over to his channel to count down the new, old, and newsworthy games that caught our attention within the last month. Oodles of games are considered, with each scoring points based on a variety of factors. And sometimes, it's not even a game, but an expansion that finds its way onto our radar. As is the case with our first entry, an accessory for a game with an award-winning pedigree, which helps earn it 50 points and the 10th spot on this month's list. Azul Crystal Mosaic is the newest expansion for the Spiel des Jahres winning Azul, published by Plan B Games. The previous expansions being additional Joker tiles, specialty promos, and additional power cards. Introduced in this expansion are double-sided player boards, each offering new challenges and new strategic opportunities. Additionally, the crystal mosaic referenced in the expansion's title is actually a plastic overlay that has recesses in it to keep tiles from being dislodged and scattered violently across the table by players who accidentally bump, jostle, or you know, otherwise nudge the table at inopportune times. <laughs> Sigh. Another hit and run. That's bringing on the heartbreak. Four of these protective cube positioning overlays are included in this expansion. So check it out if you find yourself periodically crying, no, 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 when playing as a wool. Popping onto our radar this month at number nine is 2005's Twilight Struggle by GMT Games, a two-player game simulating the 45-year dance of intrigue, prestige, and occasional flares of warfare known as the Cold War. It's a time for action, not words, as the two new national superpowers, the Soviet Union and Hello America, scramble over the wreckage of the Second World War. The game covers a vast array of historical happenings, from the Arab-Israeli conflicts of 1948 and 1967, to Vietnam and the U.S. peace movement, to the Cuban Missile Crisis, the space race, and globe-spanning nuclear tensions. Part of what propelled this game onto our radar this month is the International Twilight Struggle League Championship, which is currently running through May. This competition pits 100 different players from a collection of countries against each other to crown a confirmed Cold War conqueror. Some of the games are broadcast on YouTube, and we'll include a link to them in this video's description in case you'd like to check it out, or perhaps even participate. Someone's going to win it all. It could be you. <laughs> it won't be me. Definitely not. At number eight on our radar this month is Winter Kingdom, a sequel to the award-winning Kingdom Builder from Donald X. Vaccarino to be published by Queen Games. This sequel brings familiar mechanisms introduced in Kingdom Builder, but offers a large amount of variability and new features, including coins, asymmetric abilities, and twist cards, which provide special rules for each game. A Kickstarter campaign for Winter Kingdom, which included several exclusives, ended earlier this month. But its backers won't be left waiting high and dry for long, because the game's current estimated ship date is in October. I don't mean to cause hysteria, but we're not f f, -f foolin' when we say that the seventh game on our radar this month is Monumental, coming from Funforge. Here's a photograph. Monumental, which ran a Kickstarter in October 2018, has been printed and started shipping to its backers last month. Yay! In Monumental, each player controls a civilization represented by a grid of 3 by 3 cards, which evolves by being activated to gather various resources such as science, military, production, culture, and gold. But there's a trick. One cannot activate all their cards at once, which means that tough choices will have to be made each turn, selecting the cards that provide the right benefits at the right time. In the end, the player with the most impressive civilization solidifies their place in history. Ha <laughs> ha! And also wins the game. Sixth on our list this time is Unmatched Battle of Legends, Volume 1. 
Unmatched is a highly asymmetrical miniature fighting game for two or four players in which historic heroes are pitted against each other, represented by a unique deck designed to evoke their style and legendary skills. Battle of Legends Volume 1 features four heroes, King Arthur, Alice from Wonderland, Lady Strange Medusa, and Sinbad. Definitely all real-life historical figures. The game includes a double-sided board with two different battlefields, pre-washed miniatures for each hero, and custom life trackers, all of which are figuratively brought to life with the stunning artwork of Oliver Barrett, who is literally brought to life by his parents. And now, with more news on the artwork of Oliver Barrett, we introduce a new segment called Oh Good! Chaz Has Something to Say! Thank you, Paula, for inviting me onto my show. Uh, just so you know, I'm not clocking out for this, so take all the time you need. During the last week of March, Hasbro announced and opened pre-orders for the next figure in their upcoming new G.I. Joe classified line of 6-inch action figures, which reintroduces the characters from the 1980s toy line just in time for the franchise's 40th anniversary. Pretty cool, right? The newly announced fifth and final figure in this first wave is Destro, which is also the first character of the insidious Cobra terrorist organization to be unveiled. What's more, the packaging for the Destro figure includes artwork done by Oliver Barrett. Yes, the same Oliver Barrett who produced much of the artwork in Restoration Games' unmatched titles. Neat! Well, thank you, Chaz, for that informative report on- Hey, Paula! Did you, like me, collect G.I. Joe when you were a kid growing up in the 80s? I mean, I'm nearly the same age as you, right? Right? Please, let me have this one thing. Just, just lie. Maybe we should take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Oh, this explains why you never get any of my Def Leppard references. Ginkopolis joins the list at number 5, where the year is 2212. 2212, where the year is 2212. Two, where the year is the future. And Ginkgo Biloba, the oldest and strongest tree in the world, has become the symbol of a new method for building cities in symbiosis with nature. Excitable humans have exhausted the Earth's resources, forcing society to develop new cities that maintain a delicate balance between resource production and consumption. Habitable space is scarce, so now, when the walls came tumbling down, mankind must instead build ever upwards. To develop this new type of city, players will gather a team of experts and try to become the best urban planner in the world. Gingopolis has long been out of print since it was originally released back in 2012 and has been quite challenging to find. But its publisher, Pearl Gaines, recently announced on their Facebook page that the game will finally be reprinted later this year. And even though there are currently no plans to also reprint the game's expansion, The Experts, from 2013, the reprint of the game will include the long-sought-after English translation. Speaking of things that need an English translation, I'm supposed to end this segment by saying Gunter Glieben Glauken Globen? But I don't know what that means. Seriously? No, I don't get it either. You stay out of this! At number four, we find another game in the Twilight Struggle saga, this one being part of GMT's lunchtime series, Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. <sighs> Takes a whole lunch hour just to say the title. <laughs> This is a two-player, car-driven game that takes place in 1974, six years before the release of Def Leppard's debut album, On Through the Night. How is that relevant? They're a rock legend! At this time, as so often happened during the Cold War, a relatively obscure region of the globe suddenly took center stage. When the Emperor of Ethiopia was overthrown in 1974, a Marxist coalition took the reins of power. This new revolutionary leadership initiated a chain of events that upset the balance of power between the regional gods of war and unleashed all the familiar elements of Cold War competition in the Horn of Africa. This sets the stage for the players in the game. 
With a more limited scope and shorter game length, Twilight Struggle Red Sea is designed to introduce new players to the Twilight Struggle system while maintaining all the tension, decision-making, and theme of the original classic. Explore Paris in the 19th century with the game at number two, Paris, coming later this year by Game Brewer. Run riot throughout the city. Discover its renowned architecture and obtain the most eminent buildings in the right districts to earn the love and affection of its inhabitants and achieve victory. Paris is a medium-weight Kramer & Kiesling Euro-style game designed to offer straightforward gameplay, short player turns, a varied point salad scoring mechanism, and a cute little 3D Arc de Triomphe in the middle of the board. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when this game comes out, I'm a-getting it. Wait a minute. I'm a get in it. I'm a get in it. Chaz, how many Def Leppard references have you snuck into my lines? <laughs> 19! 19? Dude, let it go. Ooh, and even 20! Well, I suppose every rose has its thorn. Now that's poison! Ugh, bloody millennial. Okay, hey! Okay, I am barely a millennial. I am on the cusp. I'm on the cusp! Pour some sugar on me because God, you're not even trying anymore. Because Dark Ages is a historically based civilization building game that features an action selection mechanism in which players' action markers remain on the board, allowing them to gain secondary bonus actions whenever others repeat the action. While Dark Ages features objectives commonly found in 4X games, encouraging players to explore nearby regions, expand their territory, exploit their resources, and exterminate their opponents, it does so through several Eurocentric mechanisms. Dark Ages comes in two versions, Western Europe, subtitled Heritage of Charlemagne, and Central Europe, subtitled Holy Roman Empire. Both versions feature identical gameplay, but focus their attention on different parts of Europe during the Dark Ages. Even so, both versions of the game can be combined into one ginormous map, facilitating an epic battle for superiority for five or more players. Def Leppard was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on March 29th, 2019. <sighs> and the game making the biggest blip on our radar this month is Museum Pictura an upcoming set collection game for two to four players, currently scheduled to be published by Holy Girl Games in 2021, in 2021, in a year from now. Set in the roaring 20s, this game puts players in the role of aspiring curators in an art museum and features 180 paintings by Ekaterina Varlamov. The goal is to create collections of some of history's most iconic works of art. To do so, players acquire painting cards and exhibit them in collections. This game, which implements 2019's museum, brings new mechanics and strategies to the table while maintaining a strong family connection to its predecessor. With a wealth of ways to score points and plenty of player interaction, Museum Pictor is designed to challenge both new players and veteran curators alike. You doing okay over there, Chaz? I'm fine. Will it make you feel better if I promise to go listen to Pyromania as soon as we're done shooting this? Thank you. Okay. Those are the games that are on the radar as of April 2020. For more new and noteworthy board game news, including games with momentum or ones we're rooting for, be sure to check out the other videos we post on this channel too. Until next time, I'm Paula Deming from Things Get Dicey in association with Pair of Dice Paradise. Bye y'all. <laughs>